I'm the director of the Midwest Florida Manatee Research Project, which has been in operation now for perhaps 10 years. We've started recording um, the vocalizations that manatees produce, and we have thousands of recordings now that we have um, uh, in our lab. And we're beginning to determine meaning, we hope, of what they're actually doing. We're trying to associate their behaviors um, with their vocalizations. They tend to vocalize when they're playing. Sometimes they tend to vocalize alone when they're on, say, on the bottom, um, resting. When they're scratching, for example, against a log or a rope or something else, they may vocalize in pleasure. These animals were, um, are here in Cincinnati for, um, because they have had problems in the wild. And um, what, we, um, what, what Cincinnati Zoo does and the Columbus Zoo, the only two places in, um, in Ohio where we have manatees, is they um, take animals that have been hurt or um, perhaps orphaned and they bring them up and then they hopefully, the animals can be released later into the wild. We've studied um, quite a number of animals um, in the past and uh, all of those animals have been released or um, are back in Florida now. One of the studies we are currently in, in involved with is something we call uh, vocal, vocal identification. And what we'd like to do is define each animal separately from the other animals to define who is vocalizing. Illusion, this one over here, vocalizes constantly. She'll come up to the glass and she'll talk to you. And we have been able to record her vocalizations and one of the things we're capable of doing now is defining, uh, determining her vocalizations separate from the other animals in the tank. And what we're hoping is that if we can get a large enough repertoire of animal vocalizations, we can begin to define who's vocalizing. And the reason we would do that was because when these animals are released back into the wild, um, the idea is that they like to track them. Here we are at the back of the manatee tank at the Cincinnati Zoo. When we are doing recordings of, of that vocalizations, we have our equipment set up along this uh, ledge here, and then we drop a series of large hydrophones into the water. Sounds that are generated in the water by the manatees, or any really any sounds, are then picked up by that hydrophone, transmitted through a modem, to the, um, the internet, and from there they come to our lab at Xavier University where they're converted into um, uh, information which we then study vocalizations and other sounds. Another question we had about vocalizations is, is related to circadian rhythm. A circadian rhythm is the rhythm one obtains over a period of 24 hours. And we see or think we've seen differences in the activity of manatees and our question is do they vocalize at certain times of the day more frequently than others and what we found here in Cincinnati is that they tend sometimes to vocalize at four o'clock in the morning nobody knew that why are they vocalizing at four o'clock in the morning we don't know but they make a lot of noise and they go back to sleep again we also wonder about vocalization patterns over um, the entire year so that's called circanial rhythm over a year. And so the question is, do they vocalize more in the summer than the winter? Or do they vocalize more uh, in certain water temperatures? None of this has been known. And we are trying to define all of this. This is early in the studies. But the question is, are there differences? And what are the patterns? <laughs>